So I wanted to zoom out and look at the front headlock game, the guillotine, from an overall holistic perspective, right? And if you think about the guillotine as this is a submission, this is a move that we catch and apply and they tap or they don't tap, that is okay, but you're missing some of the bigger context that you can apply. So when we're using the front headlock, from the moment an engagement starts, the threat of the front headlock dictates where my opponent can put their head. The ability to grab the front headlock and use it defensively early in wrestling shuts down a lot of lower shooting. So I force my opponent to come up to upper body takedowns if they can't shoot on my legs. If they shoot on my legs and I have middle and late defense that also uses the front headlock, that's great. Once we're talking about late defense, everybody's on the ground, butt's already touched. So that's similar to how we use the guillotine to fend off passing, to create sweep attempts, to create reversals, to give us options as they pass our guard. As long as we hold onto the front headlock, we still have a choice. And we're basically using it to maneuver through all of our positions. And then once we get to top, the threat of the guillotine is forcing them to keep their back flat. The ability to use the guillotine is punishing any attempt to come on top. And then the threat of the guillotine can eventually close the show. So when I talk about using the guillotine, for me, I'm throwing all of my concepts behind my techniques at my opponent until I finish on top and then submit them with a guillotine. Any submission that happens along the way before I establish top position, I consider a Bob Ross style happy little accident. So let's take a look at some of the ways we use the guillotine in some specific scenarios. So we're talking guillotine technique, we're talking finishes, we're talking grip strategies, and then the question inevitably comes up, how do I catch the head? And I think about this in five categories. The first way to catch the head is there are moves within grappling that force my opponent's head right into the pocket. So, if we're here and Neil's trying to body lock past me and he puts his head down and I catch, there was no question, right? He put his head down, I wrapped front headlock, and we're good to go, right? So he put his head in. Option number two, why don't I just go to his head, right? So he's kind of in a low stance. I'm gonna come up, grab the head. So I went to the head. Option three, instead of going to the head, I'm gonna pull the head to me. So instead of coming up, I pull down, wrap the head, and now we're in front headlocking. So one, they initiated. Two, I initiate two different ways. I either go to them or I pull them to me, both good options. Fourth option that we're gonna talk about is I have to kind of find it in the scramble. So one of the number ways, number one ways that I like to do this is as my opponent's knee cut passing, I make the knee cut pass very available, and then I turn down to turtle, and then I'm gonna back out into the guillotine. And the way it looks is like this. Neil's gonna knee pat, cut pass nice and slow. I throw this arm up alley-oop and go to my knees, and look, this arm is hanging out right behind me. So Neil's gonna start thinking about taking the back, post, switch, up, head fair, boom, guillotine. Right, it's one of my favorite ways to catch. So you were passing, and you kept your head away while you were passing, but now as you complete the pass, you stop worrying about that and your head shows up again. Last option, Neil's got my back. We don't start guillotining while we have our back taken, right? So Neil's not worried about that. So that's why I know this is my guillotine arm now, because it's free. So why don't I just back out and make it available? Boom, boom, here. Now, either I get on top or Neil gets on top. It doesn't matter. For our purposes right now, Neil will get on top. Keeps coming, keeps coming, keeps coming, keeps coming, boom. So option one of how to find the head, their head's there. Option two, you go there. Option three, you bring it there. Option four, you transition until they forget about it. Option five, you attack from a defensive position and basically counterattack as they're hunting. Boom, so guillotine. The grip is the guillotine, the guillotine is the grip, right? Like Those are the same things, it's hard to differentiate them. But what's the purpose of the grip? To me, 
The purpose of the grip is to control them, first and foremost, you can't lose it. And then second of all, to pressure them into bad decisions. So when I'm guillotining from bottom, I want enough pressure to submit them, but the pressure of that submission is going to make them concede position. So let's talk about some gripping details here. First of all, in terms of the control piece, why do we do arm in or a guillotine without the arm? I love the arm in because it means that I'm going to win position more times than not. When I go without the arm in, I may win position, but I open up a chance at the Von Flew choke. My opponent can hop to the other side and set up the Von Flew on my neck. Boom. And once I've wrapped the head, the Von Flew is the only way to make me concede without defeating my grips. So that's why I don't use the no arm in until I have a, a high level of confidence of being able to control them and put their body where I want. So arm in. Now, when I arm in, I have one specific detail that I do differently than the vast majority of people. Most people make a fist, connect to their fist, and that's their arm in guillotine. Brian Harper, who's an absolutely brilliant mind in the martial arts community, taught me to punch into my own hand and roll my wrist up. And if you're watching, the difference between this and this is that much space. So you can literally watch the space disappear as I roll in. And if I'm working with my partner, I can start with that standard grip, drop my chin to the back. Now, I'm going to tap them just by rolling into the J-hook. That taking away the space is what locks down the grip. So by having less space and a more aggressive grip, I'm creating more pressure, more submission opportunity, and more likely the chance that they'll give up position. So arm in, I'm using the J-hook. Now, I only break down a couple of the categories. There's a million gripping options, but at a certain point, it's too much complexity beyond being useful. I like, Danaher calls it low wrist, high wrist. Um, I like to use knife hand whenever I'm low. A lot of people use that chin strap, but I don't like it as much. I like knife hand, low. And then when I go high, I want to be elbow in line with the chin. So I'm either knife hand, or then I punch deep, and my elbow lines up with the chin. So Danaher calls this high wrist position. Um, a lot of people call this like a Marcello teen. I just call it a power guillotine. Because no matter where I connect my hands, no matter what I do next, it's all the same basic finish. So the power guillotine is very, very powerful, as its name suggests. Da, da, da. And then the last option that I really like is what I call the latitine. It's grabbing the lat and pulling my partner together. What does that do? It creates better connection. It increases the pressure of the finish, and it's exactly like pulling down on their head in a triangle. So when we're here, and I go knife hand, and I can't get enough stank on the grip, I get the lat, and I fall back, and that's a done data. And a guy you can see using it at the high level, Pedro Marino, high level brown belt, competes with some of the best guys in the world. He's latitating guys now. It's super slick. So that's some grip stuff. So, how guillotines are taught versus what I think is best practice. You see a lot of extension in some guillotines. I don't like to extend at all. Um, what I like to do is focus on four main things. So, first of all, I want that control. So, as much as I'm focused on the squeeze, even more I'm focused on like not allowing them to uh, pull away from the guillotine. So, control first. Now my chin digs into their back. When my chin's down on the back, you know we got a good guillotine. So control, chin. Now I'm going to crunch. So my body's going to go like this. Boom. Just dropping in. So I'm doing like an oblique crunch. Crunch. And then I always say the last piece is to count. So we're crunched in. Now we're going to count from 30 down. get the tap. Don't there. squeeze your guillotines. Don't squeeze your guillotines. Don't squeeze your guillotines. If you feel yourself squeezing, you can find a more efficient way, I promise you. You can get enough pressure to make them roll at the least, even if you don't get the tap. So, how to manipulate your partner. Um, this is a big thing. The front headlock. There's control. There's pressure on the choke. 
but there's also the ability to manipulate, right? So one way I'm manipulating is by pushing the head down like a forward roll. The other way I'm gonna manipulate is to lift the head and chop the elbow to make them touch their other hip to the ground. So over here, so now I've got the butterfly hook on the other side, and I go the other way. But with that guillotine, we've got a two-way go. A drill that I like to have people use is their partners on the wrong side of the guillotine, and now I'm gonna put their hip down on the mat, and then as they come back up, I'm gonna bring them up over the top. So notice my elbow's gonna hit the ground on both sides. Come back. I put my elbow down on the ground. Now I'm gonna put my left elbow down on the ground. And you can see how much I'm twisting my partner around. And if you can do that, you can create some really good opportunities. If we are not focused on the submission, then we have to understand what positions can be created, and then we have to have answers. There's two main categories here. I've caught the head, I've got control. Option one is them rolling to the side where my guillotine is. So option one is they just roll over this way, right? So I'm sitting here and I think I'm gonna get my choke and my partner just decides to roll. There's ways I can stop that roll, but more often than not, I want the roll. So I don't need to worry about stopping it, I just need to know what's gonna happen and why. The other situation that we need to have answers for is when they hop across the legs. Boom. This hop across the leg is the least understood part of guillotine. So many people teach it like, just don't let them go to that side. And to me, that's the wrong answer. They're gonna go there. So let's have answers. Is my guillotine as high percentage from the moment they jump across? It drops, but if I'm effective from that position, and if I have a technical understanding of what I'm trying to do and why, I can win more battles than I'm gonna lose when they jump to that wrong side. So they're either gonna roll or hop to the wrong side, or I'm on bottom, or I'm on top. And those are really the options. When I'm on top, the key is to, my opponent wants to turn in. They wanna turn in and face me. So right now, my partner's head is flat against the ground and it's very difficult to attack guillotines. But the second they do a simple bridge and hip escape, bridge, 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 and hip escape, the back of the head just got exposed. <laughs> so when I'm hanging out and they bridge and hip escape, now I've got the head. The second I get the head, if they want to turn in, and keep going, come to their knees, then they've given up the head control. So now I've created a, a dilemma. Liddell Hart style, let's go military history, put them on the horns of a dilemma. And their options are either stop turning into me or turn into me and give me the guillotine. And now when they come up into the guillotine and I'm on bottom, I can either finish from bottom, they roll through, they go wrong side, or I end up back on top, right? So this is the game we're gonna play once we have that head wrapped. That can show up from side control, that can show up from half guard, that can show up from Z guard, that can show up from mount, very typical mount escapes, give me a chance at the guillotine. So my top position is all about threatening the guillotine to dictate terms of where we're gonna be and cutting off certain paths. Once I have you in a very limited scenario, I can attack a lot easier from Cool. So we're using the guillotine to stop motion. Now let's use the guillotine to pin them in place. So we're here. We wrap the head. This is still, you know, wrestling 101, right? Even if they've got the underhook, I still just run them over and put their back flat on the mat. I've still got the guillotine. So I can look for these pinning positions while I've got the head wrapped. A lot of times we're here on this underhook, but we're still having trouble keeping them flat. So let's wrap and then flatten them out. The cleaner that pin is, the easier it's gonna to be to move to the finish. Once I've got the pin held, 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 then I'll attack from there. All right, top finishing. So on bottom we said control, chin, crunch, count. 
Very similar theory-wise. I like one-arm guillotines a lot more from top, just personally. Um, my hip is on top of my hand. And now I'm going to drop that elbow and drive that hip. So same crunch, and I get the finish. Very common, attacking from the top. We're on the guillotine, and we think, why don't I lift up? Which does create kind of a neck crank, but there's not as much finishing torque. So I'm here. I'm in. Now I'm going to turn through. So that's just a look at how I think about the guillotine, right? We need to know how to get the head. We need to know why getting the head is fundamental to begin with. We need to know what we can do with it, how we can create pressure, how we can fight from top, how we can finish, common scenarios. When you understand this, adding in your techniques becomes a lot easier. Thug, live. Mm, 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 mm.